Sorry. All right. So sorry, guys, if you're listening here, this is what's going on. By the way, for those that haven't met me, I'm Dr. Latifat, aka Money Feed MD. I talk about money. I want women to have money, period. So the reason why I'm talking like a crazy woman is I have a special guest here with me today. And we were chatting and she's dropping so many amazing stuff already. I'm like, stop talking. I need to press play because y'all need to hear it. So I'm going to introduce her first and then we can start talking. So here's the deal, guys. Dr. Stephanie is amazing. I It's my first time meeting her in person, but I've met her through a lot of common spaces. And the reason why I invited her is twofold, actually threefold, is one is she's honest and I appreciate that about my people. Number two is that she is killing it in the locums game. And that's the main reason why I wanted to come share with you guys here because for a lot of us, we feel like we're stuck in jobs that we don't like. We settle for situations that are dehumanizing, disrespectful, because we think we don't have a choice. And everywhere Dr. Stephanie goes, every group that I'm in, in that she's a part of, she's like, guys, come to look them, come to look them. I'm telling y'all, you don't have to deal with abuse. So that's the second reason. Number three is she's the fabulous leader and creator of a group on Facebook where she's created a space for women physicians that are crazy about Peloton. Well, I'm going to edit that a little bit. Not all of us are crazy about Peloton. I love Peloton. I'm excited about it, but I'm like the biggest slacker in the world. I sign up for like <laughs> for some of the Pelofundos and I'm like not even contributing. This is a disclaimer and I have to be honest with you. I haven't contributed, but I'm sharing you guys on. But anyways, she is um, she's a powerhouse. She inspires. And my hope is that as you listen to this, you hear her words and you understand that you have a choice. So welcome, Dr. Stephanie. Thank you so very much, Dr. Latifa, Money Fit MD guru. I love it. I am Dr. Stephanie. I am your double board certified critical care physician. I work with physicians who are struggling with their jobs, burnt out with their careers, or who just want some career advice. Through my books, webinars, coaching, and speaking, I help physicians discover alternative jobs and careers in medicine so they can practice medicine on their own terms. And I am also the founder of Mocha Spin Docs, because I am a Peloton fanatic. I love the group, and I just want to bring us all together so that we can do what? Do better together. So I love it. And I love that you're dancing with me because people look at me like crazy when I dance on my videos because I'm like, y'all, this is life. We need to enjoy it. We, need to, we take it too seriously. And that's why we're not doing the things that we want to do because we're like, this is life. I got to wear a suit and tie and all the stuff. And before we get into the nitty gritty, so I'll tell you one thing that I've been talking a lot about now when it comes to money and life. And it's this idea of decolonization right? And how without even knowing it, we are, we have ideas of how things should be based on what we've been shown. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, just check in. That's okay. Me. That's okay. I can edit that part out. That's a great okay. thing about this. All right. So going back. So it's this idea of decolonization because a lot of times we don't even realize it. There are ways that we think things should be because that's how we've been shown, right? And we know that when it comes to life, there are the active things we're learning, but there are other things that we've been taught without even knowing they're the unconscious messages we're getting. So when it comes to money, we've been told, we've been shown, and we've actually unconsciously accepted the fact that money has to look like a suit and tie, has to be boring, rigid, frigid, talking in monotone voices. And I'm like, hell no! Let's make it fun, right? Let's do it in a way that it's attractive so that we all understand that we can be the idea of what money looks like, of what life looks like. So when I'm like laughing and dancing on my videos, it's because that's what I identify with and I can be all that and have money and teach money and help you learn how to master your money. So anyways, that was like a little, little thing on the side. So talk to us, get us all the look of money. How did you get into look of <laughs> Okay. Since we're being honest, and like I like to tell everybody, I got into locums because I'm unemployable. I am unemployable. 
See, I am from a single parent household. My mother and my father got divorced when I was young. And my mother is a teacher. And I specifically remember my mom sitting me and my brother down and basically telling us that life is about choices and we need to decide what kind of life we want to live and what kind of homes we want to live in and what kind of cars we want to drive and what kind of life we want to live. And then we need to make the appropriate choices in order to have the lifestyle that we want. I was like seven when my mom gave me that talk. But I tell you, that is the one thing that I keep going back to. And my mom, like I said, she was a teacher, just recently retired after 42 years of teaching English. 42 years, just recently retired. And my mother always worked extra jobs to make ends meet. And she always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So her, her thing was always like, you know, entrepreneurship is the way to go. You guys need to start thinking outside the box. You guys need to start thinking about how you can generate other revenue. So I'm looking at my mom. To me, she's killing the game. You know, she's teaching, she's raising us. You know, she's, she's hustling and she's making it happen. And I internalized that. So when I got into med school, finished med school and got into residency, I was the first person in my class to moonlight. I was just like, you know what? Because I knew that you could find other ways to make money, that you can have a part-time job and you could have a side gig. So I was like, let me sign up for step three right now. Soon as I took step three, I was applying for my unrestricted license. So my second year in uh, internal medicine residency, boom, I was moonlighting, baby. Wow. I was lane because I liked having the extra money as I didn't feel like just wasting my time off now we can talk about some of the trade-offs that I made but because I always hustle and moonlit as a resident I didn't know there was a formal name for that and the formal name for that is called locums so fast forward I do my critical care fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh. Once again, as soon as they gave us the permission to moonlight, boom, you're I was out. Moonlight, killing it because I needed, I needed, not wanted the extra money. You know, back in training, you needed that extra money. And one or two thousand dollars extra a month is life changing. And um, so I was always doing that. And so when I took my first job as an attending physician, when I finished up at Pittsburgh, y'all know how training prepares you to practice medicine, but it doesn't prepare you for the real world. Got out there, so idealistic, bringing critical care from the University of Pittsburgh to a private suburban white hospital who was not used to the intensivist practice model. Hmm. Long and short of it, got a phone call, contract not renewed, first job out, devastated, hmm. killed me. I'm like, oh, that's not supposed to happen to physicians. We're not supposed to be fired because technically that's what it is, you know, contract not renewed. I'm like, damn, what am I going to do? I had just bought a house. Uh, how am I going to make these ends meet? But guess what? Because I already moonlit and I never gave up my side hustle jobs when I took my first job still had my credentials still had my privileges at the other hospital I was like yep Hello. hey this <laughs> is what happened do you have some shifts available so I was able to transition over you know fast forward maybe a, a couple of weeks later I had gone to a conference SCCM conference and I see this big display from a you know locums agency and I'll never forget it I was with my friend I walked over started talking to the lady and she was saying blah 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 but um then I was like huh Got it. and I signed up called recruiters and the recruiters called me and to me it just fit naturally because I had always moonlit I had always done that so I was like you're gonna pay me how much how much to do what? Where? How much you paying? I did this. <laughs> A calculator. Me up. And so there it began. And um, I went back to school to got, get my MBA, did locums while I was getting that. But I will be honest with you, Dr. Latifa. I um, didn't always embrace the locums lifestyle because I was embarrassed 
that I was doing locums. I was embarrassed that I lost my first job. I was scared to get another job um, because we had not been taught in medical school and residency and fellowship that there are other ways that you could practice medicine. We had not been taught that. We had been taught that you either do private practice, academics, or you work for somebody. Nobody told us that you could work for yourself as an independent contractor, freelance physician. And because I was the only person that I knew doing that, I didn't have the self-confidence to own it. Hmm. So what did I do? We know what happens when we make decisions out of a place of fear and not out of a place of faith. When we let fear drives up, drive us, we make bad decisions. So what did I do? I made a bad decision. Not really bad at the time, but I took a job, was like, well, I can't keep doing locums. Well, why can I keep doing locums? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't keep doing locums. I'm going to go back to Kentucky to do lo where I had done locums. I'm going to go back to this place to take a permanent job there. Fast forward nine months. I'm like, I can't do this. So then what do I do? Take another bad job. <laughs> Fast forward nine months. And they like, we can't do you. You need to go. So guess what? Now that time I had been racially discriminated against, sexually harassed, and then fired, and then had my livelihood threatened. Mm. So then I had to get legal representation. I had to pay $40,000 worth of legal fees, seven months in the process before I was able to move on. Wow. Now, you know what? I cannot do this. I can't be in that situation again. I cannot be in that situation again. So I was like, I have to own this and take control of it, but still, still didn't learn, moved to Houston, still took these other jobs as now I'm 1099, but then I'm like trying to do a long-term 1099 thing. Mm -mm. Still getting disrespected, still when my time at a place was up, still not realizing that that time was up, hmm. still trying to hang on. And I finally just had to embrace the fact, and I will tell everybody that I am unemployable because the minute I feel my time is up at a place, the minute I feel that it is no longer, they are no longer appreciative of me of being there, the minute I feel that I am being tolerated and not celebrated, and the minute I feel that my spirit is like, it's time for you to bounce, I bounce. And that's why I do locums. So it hasn't been an easy journey. Locums is not um, the end all be all. It's not for everybody, but what it is, it's for anybody that needs a little bit of help, transition, something to fall back on to know that you can always go someplace and work for a small period of time and make a good amount of money. This is so, okay, I've been listening, but I've gotten so much, right? And I will, mm -hmm. number one, I'm unemployable. I'm going to be making a video about that, thanks to you, because I think people make that sound like a bad thing. It is actually not. It's okay to be unemployable on it, right? And then the Bible number, says, yeah, tell uh, me. Can I interrupt you? Please. So I am an entrepreneur at heart. I got some of the stuff going on. The Bible says you can't have two masters. You're going to love one and hate another. And sometimes your employer recognizes in you that there's more in you than just working for them. And if you have any other kind of outside interest, you want to explore other jobs, you're thinking about going back to school, you're thinking about changing specialties, you want to write a book, you want to start a business, you want to, you know, fall back a little bit and, you know, spend more time with your kids. If sometimes if your employers even think or get any kind of hint in the universe that you ain't drinking the employment Kool-Aid, they'll kind of make that decision for you. So that's why I say I'm unemployable because I need to have my control of my life. <laughs> the thing though is you can't when, be an entrepreneur and work with somebody. <laughs> the thing is when you when you realize or when your employer realizes that you are someone that has your voice and doesn't want that voice um, sort of like dulled down, they may let you go. But the challenge is a lot of times we make that mean that we are bad, we suck, we're horrible, we're not good enough. That's right. When, in fact, 
what we've been doing is we're trying to fit into boxes that are not us, that were either not made for us in mind or that are not just us. And we need to take our genius somewhere else because if we find what our genius is, if we find that thing that's us, then it feels like home. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you've made this your home. Oh my gosh, I've made it my home. I've made Love Comes my home because I can make my home what I want it to be. My home is everything that I am as a person. I can explore everything that I want to explore as a human being. And what I do, I don't plan my life around my job. I plan my job around my life. I decide what I want to do. And then I look at my calendar and block it off and then fill in my shifts accordingly. And that is how I have owned this and made it my own. Sounds so empowering, right? Because you can literally say, how much do I want to make this year? Where? Sure, I'll be there for two weeks. Sure, I'll be there for one week. That is exactly what I do. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. awesome. So let me ask you, and I know we didn't talk too much about personals before. Feel free to share as little or as much as you want. Sure. Do you have any kids? Is this something that you think works for people regardless of whether they're parents or not? I do not have kids, and that is why I am able to travel. However, I do know women who do have kids who do travel for locums because guess what? Their significant others actually takes care of the kid when they're not at home. (laughs) The evolutionary concept that you actually expect the person that you procreated with to be able to keep your kid alive in your absence. And I think that that's one thing that women need to flip that script and we need to start demanding that our partners pick up the share like if so for example i tell a lot of i have a lot of clients that are moms i'm like you know what maybe you can't go someplace for two weeks but can you go for two days can you can you go on an assignment that is within driving distance of your home and be gone for saturday and sunday can you do that Because even if you can do something as simple as that, that extra five grand that you can make can change the trajectory of your family's financial future. Can you get your husband or your significant other or your wife to watch the kids for 48 hours? Can you have your mama or your auntie come watch the kids for 48 hours while you go and do something that is going to change the trajectory of your family and your children's family? And that's how we have to start thinking of this thing. Now, let's say you let's say you can't. Let's say it's just you. Ask you something else. Do you have an extra eight hours a week that you can go somewhere at night and work in an urgent care? Or do you have an extra four hours a day on a Saturday in which you could do some chart review or you can do some telemedicine visits or you can go and do some disability evaluations or you can take six hours a week and do legal review? There's so many opportunities for what I call locums, but I call what I mean is any type of thing that you can do in which you can generate additional income outside of your nine to five W-2. And if you can find that time, time in which we would be Facebooking it, wasting time, doing whatever stuff that we don't do, let's see what we can do to take that, that, wasted free time that we have and transition that into something that's generating some revenue for us. I love that. So for when I talk with women about money, I talk about the active, I talk about the passive, right? And I always remind people that part of what limits us is this idea of permanence. We mm-hmm. think that what we're doing, <laughs> just give me the thumbs up. We think that what we're doing has to be permanent. Mm-hmm. And when it doesn't seem like it's permanent, when God, world, time is telling you it's time to change, we're like, no, but it's supposed to be like, find your true love and live happily ever after, right? So that's one thing that I want us to start on learning is this idea of one thing is going to be that thing forever. Life can be in seasons and maybe this is a season in your life when your kids are young you want some flexibility that may be what this is about 
and the other thing is as well, I'm always a fan of building money and building wealth without exchanging time for money. But this can be the seed that you're taking to go invest in real estate, to go throw money into a taxable account. You're like, okay, this year, I want to make $200,000 extra because I want to take that money to build my passive income. These are the things we're talking about. These are, so I want us to start becoming more open-minded about the opportunities that are out there. Because when we say that we hate medicine, it's usually not because we hate medicine. It's because we hate the way that we're practicing it in the setting that we are. And not everybody with an MD or D or MBBS degree has to see patients. There are other ways of doing it. But the goal of this is to let you know about the other options that exist so that you can curate your own life. You can create what you want this season, understanding that it doesn't have to be permanent. Absolutely. I tell everybody, everybody that I can listen, who will listen <laughs> to me, I tell people, I'm like, there is no such thing as a permanent job. If you are a W-2 employee and you have signed a contract, there is no such thing as a permanent job. Read the term termination clause. Every clause states that this contract can be terminated without cause by either party, given whatever your 30, 60, or 90 day notice. So if you have a 90 day notice, that means your job is only secure. That means your income is only secure from 90 days for 90 days from today. Period. I tell every locums doctor, because a lot of locums doctors get into this same thing too. There is no such thing as a long-term locums assignment. The mere fact that you are there as a locums means that they want the flexibility to be able to say, nah, don't come today. So we have to get out, like you said, Dr. Latifa, we have to get out of that mindset of thinking things are permanent. There is no more permanence. The only thing that is constant is change. And I see so many doctors just devastated when they lose a job that they hate. Right? They were sitting up here and complain online about how much they hate that job, about how tired they are, how overworked they are, but then they have the nerve to be offended when your contract gets terminated, not realizing the blessing. Amen. People crying all day. Oh, they just terminated my contract. Oh, just this. Oh, just that. But I try to get people to realize that nothing is permanent so that when you get those calls and you get, you know, asked to come to the office and you ask, get asked to go down to HR and they terminate your position, that you don't internalize something that has nothing to do with you as a person and everything to do with what's going on in the business. Amen. 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 Right. Because, and it's normal. That's our default as humans is we always point to our first ourselves first to find where the problem is because we want to fix it. So when they're like, it's time to go, we're like, oh my goodness, I must have been horrible. I must have been whatever. But maybe the reason why they're letting you go is because they're like, um, we want doctors we can control. Or they're like, uh, we want extra whatever bonus for ourselves. So we need to find doctors to like get that away from, right? So the thing is, as unfair as that sounds, when we make it about our character, it can be so destabilizing and it can be dehumanizing. But what we need to understand is these are transactions. They're transactions. It's not personal. They're trans not personal. It's business. It's business. And that's why we have, we were talking um, before, we have to start looking at ourselves as businesses. We, as women, as physicians, are our own greatest asset. Amen. And we have to treat ourselves as our greatest asset. And we have to treat our ability to make money as our greatest asset. And we have to structure ourselves like business. So sometimes we have to take the emotion out of it and be like, this is a business transaction. Because they're not thinking about you personally when they're looking at that spreadsheet, when they're looking at that budget. And this institution is like, you know what? We are $5 million in the red and we gotta trim the fat. They are going through and marking stuff off like this. 
they're not thinking about you personally. They're thinking about a business decision that's in the best interest of that organization. Likewise, we women have to start looking at our money and our careers as what is in the best interest of us and not what we think we owe somebody based on some notions of colonization that we got in medical school about what an acceptable medical career looks like. We got to stop that. Preach it, sister. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. Preach it. So I've gotten so much, by the way, for those that are listening or watching, I'm taking notes because when we talk about this, it brings up some important things that I'm going to record on future videos. You know, is your job secure? What does that even mean? Financial security. Am I, I'm unemployable. That may be the best compliment anyone ever gives you is, hey, doc, we've decided that you're unemployable. Instead of like feeling sucky about it, you need to like invite us over so we can toast, you know, just toast some like glasses of champagne to the fact that hallelujah, someone has determined for you the fact that we already know that this was not made for you in mind and we needed to curate your own life. The other thing that this brings to mind is the whole idea, and I've talked about this on other podcasts or videos, is the importance of having your emergency funds in place. So let's talk about that from a locums perspective, because whether you're, you know, locums or whatever, it's so important to have your emergency funds, because if you don't, it makes, it decreases the power of your voice and the right. fact that you actually have choices. So mm -hmm. talk to us, Dr. Stephanie. Yes. Stack those coins, ladies. Period. <laughs> Stack those coins. Because the thing is, I do locums full time. And so I um, don't have the, op the, the luxury of working for an employer that provides short term disability insurance. When you're a business, you know, short term disability insurance is only uh, available to businesses with X numbers of employees. It's not available for independent contractors or small businesses. So, therefore, you need to make sure that you got money stashed. You need to make sure you have the appropriate disability policies, which are long-term disability policies, which kick in after 90 days. But if you have a business of any type, if you're in private practice, you need business interruption insurance for that very uh, possibility of you can't work, but you still need to be able to pay your overhead and pay your staff and things of that nature. And you've got to have money in the bank. So you have to stack that money got to stack that money and you have to plan for that money and you have to make sure you have all of your insurance policies in place for everything that you do so let me ask you because this is a fear that comes up for people what if i can find a locums opportunity you can find locums opportunities if you can't find one it's like it's because you're not looking in the right place okay i have okay. 17 medical licenses 17. wow so what you have to do is you have to diversify. Too many people can't find locums opportunities because they're too picky because they don't want to do the work. Hmm. Are you going to be always be able to make top dollar? Absolutely not. Because I always tell people some money is better than no money and that it's always easier to find another position. Hold on a second. It's always easier to find another position when you're already working. Yeah, so tell me more. I'm listening. I'm enjoying this conversation. Right. So um, what I see a lot of is that, and I had to do, I had to do with this myself, is we internalize these things. Um, we internalize the fact that, you know, we're unemployable with this particular corporation, this particular hospital. We internalize all of the negative things that people. You're good. Now, so what I see a lot, and I had to deal with this myself, is that so many times we internalize things that really are beyond our control. You know, we internalize things that sometimes we're not a good fit for the organization, but sometimes the organization isn't a good, a good fit for us. And we, we, we internalize all the negative things that have been said to us um, or the negative things that have been implied to us as Blacks, as women, um, as Southerners, Northerners, where, wherever, you know, whatever other we are, mm -hmm. um, so many things have been said and done and make it real easy to think the problem is us. And in order, I think, to really kind of control your future, you have to kind of take the step back and be like, mm, 
It's them, not me. It's them, not me. It's them, it's them not me. It's them, not mm-hmm. me. The other thing that came to mind while you were talking is I always talk to women about the impact of diversifying our income. And Mm -hmm. that comes to mind as well as a locum physician, like this could be part of your diversifying your income. And what I found is the less reliant we are on one source, the more breathable we feel we are. Because I know you do locum, but I know you also help women physicians Mm -hmm. learn how to empower themselves. So can we talk a little bit about your diverse income sources? Oh, wow. Yes. So I do coaching. I have some books. I, um, no, I not own- too fast. Slow down. Who do you coach? Because I want whoever is listening here. That's like, oh my goodness, this lady is giving me goosebumps. This doc is giving me goosebumps. Like you are giving me. I want them mm-hmm. to know exactly what they can get by working right. with so I am a locums coach. So I help people survive and thrive in their locums careers. I have a series of online products. I have written about three books on the subject of locums. I also have my Mocha Spin Dots business. I've opened, I've started some clothing apparel for Mocha Spin Dots. I have a line of nutritional supplements uh, for Mocha Spin Dots. I am also a speaker. I recently did a talk for the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine um, about the racial disparities in COVID-19. And like you said, it's all about diversifying, but I also find that diversification is the key, not only for finances, but I think for our mental and spiritual help, because it helps to decrease burnout when you think that there are other things that I can do. And this job is not the end all be all. So you can be like, whatever, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to work this shift. I'm going to make my money. And then I'm going to go do something that makes my soul happy. And if you're listening I want you to pay attention to the fact that she combined active and passive, meaning that when she's sleeping at night, someone can order apparels from her. When she's sleeping at night, people can buy her books, right? So she's not, because that's the other thing. We all, people think we have to hustle the time and the money. This is what she's doing as her physician job calling. She chooses the hours, the shifts, the time she chooses all that, all that is, so she essentially is curating the life that she wants that would give her both passive and active income. So I want you to hear that. And the coaching part of things, if you're like, okay, this sounds great. I'm thinking about looking, but I'm still afraid. How am I going to do it? Where do I find the resources? 17 licenses. How the hell am I going to start that? I can barely remember. Should I keep one license and um, you know, on track? contact her and I'm going to be including her contact information. You don't have to struggle in silence and you don't have to hire her. You can just contact her to talk and see if you're a good fit and see how she can help you. The thing is this, anybody that you see on my platform is someone whose calling is to empower women physicians. And that is what this is about. Her goal is to help you. My goal is to help you because when you win, we all win, right? When we all get the power of our voice, it's one less doctor that's tapping out of the game. That's what this is about. So stop trying to fit into the status quo. Create your own life as Dr. Stephanie is. There are pros and cons. And she shared a lot about that with us today. But if you're like, I hit my job, but I don't want to lose my income. I hit my job or I love my job, but I want other sources of income. I can't think of a better person to reach out to. And there's that. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, right? Because it's the truth, all right? Tell us, what else do you want our people to take away from this call? Okay, let's talk about some of the things that let's say you want to get started doing something right now. So what are some actionable steps that you can get started right now? Because sometimes you just need to dip your toe in the water. The first thing that everybody needs to do, I tell everybody that they everybody needs to do locums. So the first thing that you need to do is to update your CV period. Update your CV. Second thing you need to do is you need to go online to some of the um, locums companies and upload your CV and wait for the phone calls to come in, okay? Um, And just start having conversations with recruiters about what is available. The other thing that you can do is to start talking to other physicians locally to see if they know of any opportunities locally that 
you can do some moonlighting. A lot of positions are word of mouth. They don't ever get posted. So you may be able to provide call coverage for somebody for a weekend and get paid for it. You may be able to go to somebody's outpatient clinic, outpatient office and see patients when they're not there. There's so many opportunities, but you just have to look and people don't know that you're looking for those opportunities unless you ask. So the, the time to get started is now. And the thing that you need to do is to do the one thing that you can do. And that's that's it. For And I wanna add another tidbit for uh, the listeners who are still in training. Um, I have 17 licenses. You don't need to start off with 17. You don't need to start off trying to figure out how the, which of these licenses you're going to get. And this is for everybody. There's four licenses that you definitely need to have. You need to have an active unrestricted medical license in the state you are currently living. And I say active unrestricted because of my residents and my fellows who are currently working under a training license. The sooner you get your active unrestricted license is the sooner you can moonlight, the sooner you could do locums and this is most importantly, the sooner you can start your job after training. So get your unrestricted medical license in the state you are currently residing right now. The second thing you should do is if you are planning on moving anywhere within the next six to 12 months, get a license in that state right now because it can take six to nine months to get a license. So if you're thinking about relocating, if it's remotely in, in on your mind, you need to get a license in that state. The third place that you need to get a medical license is the state where your parents are located. My mother is in Alabama. I finally got an Alabama license. Like license number 15 was an Alabama license. But that gives me the opportunity if the opportunities come available to do some work in my hometown, I'm there. If you have to relocate to go take care of your sick uh, parents, if your parents get sick or anything can happen, you need a license in that state so that you will always have the ability to work. And then the fourth state you need to have a license in is any state within driving distance. Because if you can hop in your car, drive two hours to an assignment, and come back, that is something that you need to do. And that's especially important for my sisters that live in the DMV area, DC, Maryland, Virginia, you're around there. Um, so get licenses in those states so that you always have options. So start now, update your CV and start working on some places in which you can get these licenses because that is going to greatly accelerate your ability to do locums. Wow, that was pure gold, pure, pure gold. I feel like, okay, maybe I should get a license in Phoenix and I'm in California. So I'm like, Arizona, all those places around here. But that is... The more the more licenses you have, the more tele, the more opportunities for telemedicine you could do. Yeah, and the more empowered you feel. You're like, whatever. And oh, the other thing you didn't talk about is negotiating. Do you negotiate what you get paid? I do negotiate Good. what I get paid. Good. Um, am I a hard? Am I hard about it? I am not, because I know what I want to work for. And because I've been doing locum since 2008, and many of the places that need locums always need locums, and I, I've either been to these places or I know about the places and I know about what the workload is going to be. So a lot of times people will call and I'm like, I know this place. I ain't working for that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the recruiter will be like, well, the rate is this. And I'm like, sorry, my rate is that. They either meet me or they don't. But I will say this. The reason I'm able to do that is because I always have multiple assignments going on at the same time. Now, when my assignments dry up, am I a hardball about it? Am I, no, I'm not because some money is better than no money. And you don't need to walk away from a $25,000 locums assignment because you're nickel and diamond over $10 an hour. Mm. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, stupid. that makes sense. And again, That's if you're diversifying your sources of income, you get to choose 
whether you want to go there. You're like, okay, you know what? I want to be in Virginia for a month. I'll take locums there. Yes, it may be slightly less paid, but that's you're not just going there only because of the money. You're going because of money, lifestyle, location, and all those other stuff. So this has been fantastic. So how can people find you? I am always on Facebook. <laughs> find the Mocha Spin, you know, group. You'll find her there. Actually, you know, I'm actually on Facebook. So you can actually DM me on Facebook, Stephanie E. Freeman. You can also email me at Dr. Stephanie at Dr. Stephanie ICU.com. And that's, that's how most people get in touch with me. I'm, but I, like I said, I'm always on Facebook. Fantastic. <laughs> so just slide into that DM you know, and uh, we can chat. I cannot say how helpful this has been to me. And I know for sure, without a doubt, that it's just going to help so many people. Most of my audiences are women physicians, but I know some men also listen. They reach out and like, oh my goodness, thank you, whatever. And I know that this is going to help them too. So from all of us, we want to say thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for what you do. Thank, thank you for you. recognizing who you are and just running with it. And I know the process is never easy, right? We all learn it's like you bruise and all that stuff, but your experience is now being used as a lesson and as a gift to other women physicians. So I want to say thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for having me. And one more thing that I want to tell everybody that we talked about in the pre-show is that low comes is the best kept secret. It is the best kept secret in terms of um, physician work models. And there is a reason for that. And I like to tell everybody that the, the amount of money that can be made is so amazing that all of my locums recruiters, they're men, they're married. Their wives stay home and raise their kids. Meanwhile, we women are out here working. So let, 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 let that sink in about the amount of money that's been allocated to higher locums doctors and the amount of money that you can make in this industry. Best kept secret. It is the best kept secret. And everybody needs to get in this game. Get in the game in whichever way you can. I cannot think of a better way to end this. You guys have heard her. You've heard Dr. Stephanie Freeman. Locums is the best kept secret. So get in the game. Reach out to her. Reach out to me. Let us know how we can help you. We're here to support you. It's a not, no judgment zone, right? Judgment free zone. We're here to help you. So thank you guys for joining us. It's been a pleasure as always. And for those that have Trying to reach me, moneyfitmd at gmail.com. Find me on Instagram, Facebook, moneyfitmd. And have a fabulous rest of the week. Bye-bye.